What is going on ladies and gentlemen, I go by the name of Gio, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be going over what I wish I knew before I became a software engineer. Now as a student, I was just so focused about, I need to just become a software engineer. I need to you know, get out of school, waking up early in the morning to go to these classes. At least I can at least get paid for it after I become an engineer. But you know, now that I'm an engineer, I can actually discuss what I wish I knew while I was still in school, or while I was still a student. Hopefully this can help you clear up any confusion you may have before you start the process of actually becoming a software engineer. So let's get started. The first thing that I learned is that every company is not structured like school, right? You don't, you know, wake up, you know, classes at eight, it's from eight to nine, you know, you have homework, right? And this homework, you know, has these answers, right? It's, it's gonna be one dimensional. No, there are companies that come with a lot of chaos and that's, you know, I, I want you guys to be ready for that rude awakening. Um, some companies don't have a lot of structure especially the smaller ones right the bigger companies you know they establish a system you know they got to that level because they went through that early phase of you know the chaos and then they help establish systems that got them to that place but a lot of these smaller companies even the medium level companies they are still going through some chaos as a software engineering consultant I see it all the time you know I go into these companies um, and they don't have systems in place it's chaos some you know some don't even use github it's it's, it's crazy um so i would just say you know get ready for that if you're unable to get into a company that you know doesn't have a system or doesn't have a culture i would say don't get um you know sad or mad just learn from the experience and you know hopefully you find something that's uh more established or hopefully you're that person that can help establish the culture but i'm just gonna say up front that not every company has a system in place um, and not every company is structured so just watch out for that. Another thing that I wish I knew before becoming a software engineer is that there is always something to learn, right? There's always something to learn. This career is gonna be a never ending process of learning and you just have to be ready to pivot sometimes, right? Uh, software engineering is very a very broad, broad, um, I guess, title, right? It can be, you know, you could do DevOps work, you could do front end work, you could do back end work. You could do AI and machine learning. There is such a broad spectrum. And because it's such a broad spectrum, there's just so many things that you can learn in different branches. So just know that it's not gonna be a one-stop shop. There's just gonna be so many things that you have to learn, so many things that you're gonna have to pivot to. Maybe you might start off as one thing and then you go on to another thing. I honestly thought when you know I was a student that I like front-end engineering. But then I got into enterprise and I realized, okay, you gotta work with the UI UX team, then you gotta work with business, and then they all gotta approve at, at, on one thing. Maybe they don't like the font of one thing, maybe they don't like the margins of one thing. It, I don't like that. So I learned that I like backend, right? Backend is, you know, I'm gonna make it as scalable as possible, I wanna make it as efficient as possible, but it's just one thing. I don't have to worry about the color, I don't have to worry about the margins, I don't have to worry about the padding. It just is what it is. So, but I have to learn that, right? So there's so many things that you can learn. There's many places that you can pivot and do other things. You don't have to feel like you're just stuck in one thing or you have to do one thing. Uh, so that's one thing that I wish I knew before I became a software engineer. Another thing that I wish I knew before I became a software engineer is that enterprise code is a different beast. And I always knew that you know what I'm learning in you know college is not going to be the level at which enterprise is going to be. But what I should have done before I became a software engineer or official software engineer is just appreciate the fundamentals, right? When your professor tells you to write tests for your code, write some good, good tests, right? Don't just say, I'm just gonna write a couple of you know assertions and that's it. Like actually look into what testing is and write some very decent or very great test for your code. Um, write clean code. Just Get very good at the fundamentals so that when you get to the enterprise, you have a very great understanding or great foundation and you, just, you can just expound on that, right? You can just keep going from there. It's not like you have to do a refresher too much. Um, you can do an initial refresher, but at least you know your foundation is strong. You can, you can just go from there. So understand that enterprise is a different beast, but just appreciate the fundamentals at the same time. Your life with a, as a software engineer will be easy, especially in the beginning. Another thing that I wish I knew before coming a software engineer is that you're not just a software engineer. You're just a person that just so happened to be a software engineer, right? There's more to life than just your position, right? It's great that you can just tell people you're a software engineer, but balance, 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 balance. Balance is very important. And you know, it's cool that your work life is a software engineer, but maybe you're a, 
you know, a person that likes to play the piano, a person that likes to dance, uh, there's different things that embodies who you are. And just don't be that person that is just work oriented. Maybe you like work, but I would just say try to balance things where you can. You know, learn a new thing, learn a new recipe, um, go for a run, like balance yourself out. So um, I think as a student, that was my issue was I was just so focused on the position. Okay, I want to be a software engineer. I want to work for a great company. I want to make this amount. Um, I want to work on this thing, but more balance, right? You're a college student. This is the best time of your life. And I enjoyed college, but it's not just about just being a software engineer. There's more to it. Another thing I wish I knew before coming a software engineer, and this, this list is getting long, but because I just learned a lot throughout this this process of becoming a software engineer, but I, I learned not to fall in love with a company, right? And even some of the people, like there are some great people that you can meet while being an engineer, but you have to do what's going to help you grow and what's best for you, right? Because there's a lot of movement in tech and sometimes you can feel like you, you want to work for the, with these people for the rest of your life. And maybe you might, maybe you might fortunately meet a company or meet people or meet people within a company that you can work for or work with for the rest of your life. That's great. But I would say, especially initially, do not just fall in love for the company. Um, you got to think about your career as well. Like for me, when I did my internship, I was like, man, I'm going to stay at this company for the rest of my life. But as an engineer and as a person, would that have helped me grow uh, to where I needed to be? If I was still at my first company, I don't know if I would like it. I don't know if I would have got to the level that I am now. So I'm glad that I left my first company, even though I feel like I was going to stay there for at least a longer period of time. It just didn't end up that way. And I'm glad that I left because it helped me grow as an engineer. It helped me grow as a person. So don't just fall in love with the person. Don't just love fall in love with the people. Have a clear, concise goal of where you're trying to get to or where you're trying to go. And you have to make a decision on whether that company will help you or can help you get to that goal. I know there's some people that can stay at Google for the rest of their life or stay at Microsoft for the rest of their life or stay at Amazon for the rest of their life. That's great. But, you know, at least have a plan of what, where you're trying to get to. And if that company can help you get to that plan, then a tough decision is on the horizon. So in my case, I had to make a decision on whether that company will be a part of that future goal. And in my case, it just wasn't. So as much as I like the people that I work with, it just it just wasn't it. So don't just fall in love with the people. Don't just fall in love with the company. You got to make a decision based on your future and where you're trying to be or where you're trying to go. And remember... Unfortunately, you are replaceable. Um, I've been through many layoffs so far. I've seen people who put in hours and hours of work and they still get laid off. Um, so remember, unfortunately, you are replaceable. You know, tough times do happen and companies do have to lay people off. But, you know, that that's just one thing to keep in mind when, you know, falling in love with a company. You are replaceable, replaceable. I would just say don't just burn bridges. Leave cordially. I've had the opportunity to leave a company, my first company. And still get a call back from my manager saying, okay, I'm at a new place. Would you like to join me here? Which felt great because it meant like, you know, you appreciated the work that I did while we worked together. And you were, you know, thinking of me in that process. So don't burn bridges. If you, you know, can stay cordial, stay cordial. Keep it professional. You know, everybody knows that there's, you know, different opportunities out there. And if it's, you know, someone that want to see your growth, they will respect that. And they'll respect the decision that you make. And then... Bouncing off the last thing, I wish I took the interview prep more serious while I was, you know, still in school. Like, I fell in love with the company, like I just discussed, and I just told myself I want to work for this company for a long period of time. But I think people don't realize how important that initial, um, and mostly for college students, if you have the ability to work for the Googles, Amazons, and Microsofts, and those type of companies, that can help set you up for future opportunities. Once once jobs see that you have Google, Amazon, Microsoft, or those type of companies on your resume, um, it helps filter your resume much better than a smaller company, unfortunately. If you're someone who doesn't have that, many, that, that much experience, then yeah, take the, the first job you can take. But if you have the opportunity to take interview prep seriously and get into these bigger companies, then do that because that will help increase future outlook on job opportunities substantially. So... Um, that's one thing I regret um, or that I should have or should have done when I was um, still in school. Take interview prep more seriously. Don't fall in love with the company. One thing that I actually did do, but I think you guys should still know um, prior to becoming a software engineer is finding a mentor, 
I mean, it's never too late to find a mentor. You can, you know, get a mentor while you're a software engineer, but even prior to that, if you can, whether, you know, it's through internship or whenever you go to a conference uh, or someone within the business or someone that's not within the business, trying to find a mentor that can help, you know, structure or, or help you elevate as you start to go into your career is an amazing thing. You know, people that have done it or did it before um, or who's still, you know, growing on a, on a great pace. Um, it's great to have some type of mentorship that, you know, can help you as you go throughout your career, as you're starting on your career. So I would say, and that's another thing, try to find a mentor. Um, and, you know, as you start your career into tech, you know, make sure you're talking to everybody that you meet. Um, even I can keep doing that, right? To, to keep talking to senior engineers or you know, people that have more experience than, than you and, and try to get that mentorship going so that you can, you know, get to that level faster than they did, right? Because they probably were self-made. And if you can get a mentor that, you know, did it before, they can help give some knowledge that can speed up your process. This, <laughs> this right here is an important one. Do not, do not, do not sleep on soft skills. Um, it's a very important thing. If anything, it's probably how I got most of my jobs is soft skills or even opportunities to soft skills. People like talking to people that they can see working with, you know, eight hours out of the day. I know we're not in the office as much as we used to, but, you know, soft skills are important because people want to just talk right people want to know that you're listening people want to know that you have something to say um, so if you can improve your you know your, your soft skills your social skills um, just be a part of the team be by the crew be humble you know don't you don't have to you know you can be confident but that doesn't mean you have to be you know too much right you don't that mean you have to be you know narcissistic always worrying about yourself um, you know just increase your soft skills um, improve conversations reach out whenever you can like I said, these are things that I can still learn, right? But soft skills can help you get opportunities or help open doors that you didn't even know um, were there. So I would say, even when I, if I knew that you know soft skills were more important, which I mean I did know soft skills was important, I just unintentionally knew because it helped me get to, to the opportunities that I had now. But uh, for people who don't know, soft skills is a very important thing. So that's something that I wish that I knew, like consciously, was important. So yeah, I mean, I've gotten jobs just based on how I talk to people. Like even when I was at a conference, you know, I didn't pass the the um, the technical interview, but the people were just saying that they really like me. <laughs> they really like me. Like yeah, you 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 missed on the you missed on the interview, but here's here's my number. You reach out to me when you do a little bit more studying. Um, we really like you. We really like your personality. You know, we really like you know the soft skills, the soft things. Like it's not all about technical all the time. It's can someone see that they can work with you for a long period of time. Another thing that I wish I knew, and this is going to be the last one because this list is getting pretty long. There's just so many things that you can learn. But, you know, being in my second year of tech, this is what I wish I knew before becoming a software engineer is having an understanding of what the future kind of entails, like having a goal even you know prior to becoming a software engineer. Like I knew as a student that I wanted to be a software engineer. So the end goal was just graduating and then getting a job. But, you know, what kind of software engineer do I want to be? You know, I know everybody's wanting to say that they want to be full stack, which is great. If you want to be full stack, you know, go for that. But um, I wish I had some type of, you know, goal, which I, I do now. That just took some time. But if I knew that prior to, you know, becoming a software engineer, uh, of, of what type of engineer I want to be, and, you know, I, at least creating a roadmap on, you know, when I want that first promotion and, and how can I get to that first promotion. And like I said, getting a mentor which was you know another thing that i wish i knew earlier in this video would help with that but um, just try to set up goals for yourself even um you know before you start officially as an engineer of you know where you want to be you know how it look like maybe you might want to watch some day in the life videos or maybe talk to a mentor like i said um, or if you've done an internship you know discuss with uh, you know your manager that hired you or some of the engineers that you work with on what are their goals and you know start creating your own list prior to becoming a software engineer. And then when you do become one, at least you have some type of path that you wanna take. So these are some of the things that I wish I knew before becoming a software engineer. And there's a lot more things that I'm learning that I, I wish I knew, but it's all a process, it's all a journey. Hopefully this is something that can help you guys um, because I wish I knew this. So hope you enjoyed that. Leave a like, subscribe, more coming soon. Thank you.